Hello and welcome to another Spectrum Geeks video. It's time for the monthly solar PV stats update for my system here in the UK. And really the aim for these monthly videos is to help you compare your system to similar or larger systems or even smaller systems here in the UK. And also if you're thinking about getting uh, solar panels on your roof, this hopefully might help you because many people think that solar panels aren't worth it here in the UK, but trust me, they are. Right then, so I'm constantly trying to improve the channel. So I have actually been looking at some of the analytics of the previous months of these solar update videos that I do each month. And I see that things kind of tail off as I start to go through the day by day. I can still see that some people are interested in the, the daily stats, but in general, most people are interested in how is the system performing for the, the month as a total and how that compares to kind of previous months and some um, of the kind of usage that I have. So I'm going to do a slightly different version to this monthly video, see how this one works. We're going to look at obviously the, the generation for my solar system here for February 2021, as well as my grid consumption. Talk about how much money that equates to me in terms of the feed-in tariff that I have. Uh, also, obviously, if you're adopting to solar now, you don't have that, so you'd be exporting to give you some indication of what that would be like for me if I was exporting and obviously just a reminder of what my setup is and how how things will fit together. So let's go through that now. So as per usual, I'll try and share some information on the screen as it makes sense. So we'll start off with a reminder of what is my solar PV setup. So I'm here in the UK, as I mentioned before, in the, the West Midlands in the Worcestershire region. I have 30 300 watt PIMAR solar panels on my roof. I'm kind of south easterly facing and I've got about 30 degree gradient. So that panels, that number of panels gives me a nine kilowatt solar array. On the back of every single one of those panels, I have a solar edge optimizer. Now optimizers are really good if you have uh, shaded areas of your panel. So if you've got a large tree or something that might cast a shadow, I don't have that. But even without that, the optimizers are good. You get a little bit more grunt out of the, the panels. And really for me, most importantly, I can see how each individual panel is performing. So if there's a, an issue with the panel or a failure of some sort, this will help me identify that I've got a quirk in my system that needs to get looked at. All of those panels and those optimizers connect back into a six kilowatt HD wave uh, inverter by Solar Edge. So again, nine kilowatt array that gets restricted down to six kilowatts. That may sound strange if, we, if you're new to solar PV, please check out some of the other videos. This is actually a really good system. With Solar Edge, you can um, over architect your system up to 150%, which is pretty much spot on for this. So a nine kilowatt um, solar array with a six kilowatt inverter enables me to maximize my solar generation most of the time. Connected into this, I have a Tesla Powerwall 2 with the original gateway. So no ability to be off grid. If there is a power outage, uh, all my solar system, the battery shuts down. I have looked at getting a uh, the gateway 2 so I can be off grid, but right now I don't think it makes uh, financial sense to do that. But the Powerwall 2 has uh, ability to store 14 kilowatt hours of storage and I can use up to 13.5 kilowatt hours of the energy from that battery. It has a built-in inverter which enables you to have a continuous uh, supply of power up to five um, kilowatts. It does say it has a boost up to seven. I've never ever seen it do that. In addition to this, I have a couple of other things from My Energy. So uh, I have the My Energy Harvey. This is a little box that enables the CT clamps that I have connected to my solar and the battery and the grid to wirelessly communicate with the hub and the Zappi and the Eddy. The hub is a little device that enables you to use the app and bring some smartness to your Eddy and your Zappi. Most of the time, the app seems to be pretty crap to me but we will talk about that in a moment. Uh, and then I have the eddy. This enables me to heat my immersion tank of, of water to make it hot uh, using solar surplus. And I have the Zappi Generation 1, 
that enables me to charge my car uh, up to seven kilowatts an hour um, at 32 amps, which is fantastic. And then all of this is um, kind of backed up by obviously my energy provider, which is Optimus Energy. I use the Optimus Go tariff that gives me basically energy at a third of the price from half past midnight to half past four in the morning. And if you are looking to change supplier and perhaps do something similar, if you use the link in the description, you'll get 50 pounds credit when joining with my link. So that's uh, an introductory as to, uh, a reminder as well as to what my solar system looks like. So now we get into the business of what does it look like actually for February. So in February 2021, my system generated 405.11 kilowatt hours. And of that, I was able to self-consume 385.65 kilowatt hours. Um, I did then export 19.46 kilowatt hours because on a couple of the days it was really good and I didn't have an ability to consume all those things. So in general for me, I'm trying to consume as much electricity as I can. By what I mean there is uh, obviously put energy into the battery that I can use later when the sun's gone down and try and minimize uh, the amount of energy that I'm giving back uh, into the grid. That, and that to me really, I think I'm going to do a separate video on that, but for me, that is the advantage of having a battery. You can maximize your solar generation. Uh, in terms of how that performance compares, so originally when I had the quote for solar and the assessments that were done on my location, in February they say that I would get around 350 kilowatt hours of, of solar generation. My personal estimates were about 320. So as you can see, being over that was a really good month actually for February. In terms of how that compares to previous years, you can see on the screen here that actually February wasn't too bad. It was better than last year, but not quite as good as 2019 when I had the, the solar first installed. So to show some of the variance year over year that we get with solar, not only here in the UK, but, but everywhere. Then if we look at uh, the month as a whole, you can see the weather's still been pretty bad, even though the weather is definitely getting better in February. Uh, my consumption continues to be high. If you've not seen the videos before, uh, I work from home here in the cave doing IT stuff. I've got many servers and computers and monitors on all during the day. So we are quite a high consumer of energy. We also have two electric vehicles that we will be charging up as we need to kind of travel around and move around there. But you can see the graph there in terms of what um, consumption we had, what solar generation we had, and then the self-consumption of that solar generation. So most times you can see there's very little gr green bars on there, and that's all about how much we are, um, we've got left that we haven't self-consumed that then obviously gets exported. If we look just very quickly at our best and worst days. So the worst day in February was actually the 1st of February. We only generated 1.73 kilowatt hours of solar which sucked, um, but we're also, we're charging the cars overnight and everything. So we actually um, pulled 70.35 kilowatt hours of energy from the grid. But remember, the large majority of that was only five pence per kilowatt. So even though it sounds like a big number, it's still relatively low, which helps us keep our energy bills low. And the best day that we had in February was on the 26th. So we managed to generate 34.87 kilowatt hours of solar energy on that day and you can see there pretty nice curve again charging some cars again uh, heating hot water and uh, charging up the battery from the grid as well so um, even though we had a high consumption day you can see that input from the grid was pretty much half so only 38.69 kilowatt hours pulled from the grid okay so in terms of financials um, so as mentioned at the beginning the solar generation for this month was that 405.11 kilowatt hours. I consumed most of it, so a little bit went back to the grid. Because I have the, the feed-in tariff, I was one of the last people to get on the feed-in tariff here in the UK, I still get some money from the government, both uh, for what I generate, and then I get 50% of what I generated as part of an export tariff. It's kind of crazy, but it works well if you were fortunate enough to still be on it like I was. So what that means is I will get, as part of my... Um, Feed-in tariff, I'll be paid £16.71 for the electricity that I generated in February. I will then be paid £11.14 for the potential export. doesn't matter that I didn't export all that much. That's how much I'll get paid for export. 
Um, and in terms of obviously that amount of electricity that I generated that I didn't then need to pull from the grid, that equates to about 52 pounds and 91 pence based on the tariff that I'm on. So basically my February total benefit of electricity, um, both in terms of financial saving and the money for feeding tariff, equates to about 80 pounds and 76 pence. Now, because I have a battery, as I mentioned earlier, I'm trying to uh, consume and store all electricity. So I've only got a very small amount of electricity that I actually exported. If I was in exactly the same position as I am today and I didn't have the feed-in tariff, I would only get one pound and seven pence for exporting. But again, the main thing is I'm saving a lot of money, um, basically, as I mentioned, about 52 pounds and 91 pence of not having to buy that electricity from the energy provider. So how that kind of makes sense. I always uh, also talk about the performance from uh, the power wall and kind of what electricity I had going into there. So in February, I managed to get 370 kilowatt hours of energy out of the power wall to power my home. Obviously some of that will have come from the grid. Some of that also would have come from the solar surplus uh, that we had that wasn't powering the house. I can't really tell you too much about the electric for the heating of the hot water and the car because life was happening. I didn't get a chance to pop outside and take a note of the readings. So I look in the My Energy app and as per usual, it hasn't got all of the data. So right now, um, all it tells me is I, I used 26.6 kilowatt hours of energy to heat hot water. I'm not sure if that is the whole month's data or just a fragment of it or something. Not quite sure again, because the app's not working properly. And then when I look at um, charging the car, it says um, 41.4 kilowatt hours. And I know I used a lot more than that um, in February. So try and make a, a better job next time of remembering to go outside before I go to bed to make a note of those numbers. But I hope that helps. Um, please share your stats below in the comments along with the size of your system so other people can make more informed decisions about if they want solar PV. Also let me know if this format is any better. Appreciate I've probably been talking uh, a lot again about the system and everything. Just trying to bring people up to speed but maybe this is a better format moving forward. And, and as always, thank you very much for watching. Please like, share, subscribe and hit that notification bell. Uh, I would really appreciate it. Catch you in the next video.